where there is light, shadows lurk and fear reigns. Yet by the blade of night, mankind was given hope. Hey hey, welcome back to another episode of Tokusatsu 101, your crash course on rubber-suited men fighting rubber-suited monsters. Though today there's a lot less rubber and a lot more magical armor, because today we're talking Garo. Garo is the brainchild of Keita Anemi, a longtime character designer and director for various tokusatsu series such as Kamen Rider Black and the ever-popular Chojin Sentai Jetman. Final Fantasy XIV players will also recognize his work in the boss designs for Return to Ivalice, as well as just the full-on crossover that Garo had with Final Fantasy XIV a couple of years ago. A collab that might actually put Garo as the most well-known of the stuff I've talked about in this series, as far as the general public is concerned anyway even if it is just as an I-know-it-exists kind of thing. Garo is the first time we're diving into a subgenre of tokusatsu called Midnight Toku, called such because it tends to air later at night and focuses on darker and edgier things than most series. Garo, in particular, will deal with things like cannibalism, sexual assault, abuse, all kinds of unsavory things. So let that serve as a content warning for it if you're thinking about getting into this series. Garo also features some nudity, so if that's something that bothers you, maybe keep that in mind. With that said, let's dive in. In the world of Garo exist creatures called Horrors, demons born of the negativity and hatred of humanity who invade the normal world to hunt and feast on humans. These Horrors are resisted by an order devoted to wiping them out, the Makai Knights. Now, Horrors are resistant little buggers, so the Makai Knights use a variety of magical artifacts to combat them, most notably Makai Armor. These armors are forged from a mystical metal called Soul Metal, and the series gets its name from one of these armors. Garo. Yes, Garo is not a specific person, but the name of an armor. And this brings us to the first thing that I find really interesting about this series. There is no singular user for Garo, and the franchise actually follows several users of the titular armor, putting it in a sort of similar camp to Ultraman, where most of the franchise takes place in the same universe. That said, Garo differs from Ultraman in that it regularly revisits Garo users, and so the series ends up splitting itself into sections representing them. This creates something of a barrier for entry, leading people to wonder where they should start and what order they should watch these shows in. No matter what, I'm going to suggest starting with the original show. It'll give you a good idea of the universe and how the series operates so you can decide if it's something you really want to get into. Past that, there's a couple ways you can go. Release order is always a good idea since, obviously, that's the order the shows came out in, and if your franchise doesn't make sense watching it in release order, then it's probably got a few problems. The other paths are where things get a little... complex. And before we move any further, I feel I should mention that I'm not really much of a Garo fan, so basically all of this is lifted from a guide made by a 4chan user a few years ago, with a couple of adjustments made for the few things that have come out since that guide. The original series follows Koga Saijima, and if you want to continue his story after finishing it, then you'll want to watch Beast of the Midnight Sun, Red Requiem, Kiba Dark Knight Apocrypha, Makai Senki, Lament of the Dark Dragon, and then the Togen Flute. As far as I can tell, this tends to be the de facto start point most people give out, so if you're not going to go in airing order, then I'd say this is probably the best route to go down. If, however, you want to experience something else, there is what's known as the Ryugaverse, called such because it's in a separate timeline from the Koga series and focuses on Ryuga Dogai as the user of Garo instead. His story begins in The One Who Shines in Darkness and continues in the movie Goldstorm and the TV series Goldstorm Show. Also, if you're a Kamen Rider fan, it might be worth noting that Goldstorm Show also introduces the horror Jenga, played by Kamen Rider Decade himself, Masahiro Inoue. Given how many things Jenga appears in, I think it's safe to say that he's decently popular, so a character like that, played by a generally popular actor, is probably a good incentive for taking this route. The Ryugaverse also contains the film God's Fang and the Jenga TV series, both of which should be seen after Goldstorm Show. Now, these next few are not strongly recommended for going in from nothing. You certainly can go in from a blank slate, but both are suggested to be watched after Koga's stories. Koga's son Raiga takes up the mantle of Garo in Flower of Makai and the very recent Moonbow Traveler film, plus a spin-off in Biku the Movie. I'm not totally sure about the standing of Raiga or his shows and movies in the fandom, but given the fact that he is Koga's son, I'd definitely suggest not seeing these until you've gone through his father's stuff so not exactly a great spot to get into things. Similarly, Zero Black Blood and Zero Dragon Blood, which don't follow a Garo user, but rather the user of the Zero armor, Rei Suzumura, 
are absolutely to be watched after the Koga series, as Zero is a recurring character in those, and Black Blood in particular takes place after the movie Lament of the Dark Dragon. It's probably safe to assume that the creators intended for you to have seen that before these. There's also Garo Makai Tales and Garo Ashura, both of which are 10th anniversary stuff and are probably not great for newbies. Something that is good for newbies, though, is Garo vs. Road, another brand new continuity and the most recent Garo project at the time I make this video. I actually did catch some of this while it was airing. It's pretty good stuff and doesn't require any prior Garo knowledge, but it is pretty different from mainline shows. Following a sort of Battle Royale style death game and lacking a lot of major Garo elements, like not featuring the titular Garo armor for very much of the show. So if you do start with it, just know that it is not like the rest of the franchise. Just from my perspective, I'm still going to say go in airing order because it's honestly easier to just look at Wikipedia for a list of shows than to try and follow a specific timeline. But if you don't want to do that, then Koga's series is the way to go for beginners. However, Garo is not just live action, it also has a few anime to its name. These are separate both from the tokusatsu shows and from each other, so you can largely start anywhere. It is worth noting though that Divine Flame is a sequel to the original Garo the Animation, and Crimson Moon is apparently not very good, so maybe don't start with that one. If you want a specific recommendation, Garo Vanishing Line was being praised up and down when it was airing, so that's probably where I'd suggest starting. Speaking from experience, Garo can be pretty confusing from an outsider's perspective, since unlike other big toku franchises, it actually does have an ongoing continuity, so knowing where to begin can be complicated. Hopefully though, this video gives you a decent idea of what's going on and how the hell you should watch this series, and hopefully my lack of first-hand knowledge didn't majorly screw anything up. That's all for now, and I will see you guys next time.